On the spectrum of regret, fashion regrets are not the worst thing in the world. And for those of us who like copying a John or two every now and again, there are moments when we look back and ask ourselves for items that we've sold, why did I let my Rick Owens Yeezy Supreme Bape hoodie go for $10 on Craigslist? <laughs> and with all this accumulated regret, you find yourself here watching this video. <laughs> Welcome, this is JRA, John Regrets Anonymous, and I am your leader, Drew Joyner. <laughs> for those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew What I Do, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the fashion items that I regret selling. I want this video to have a ton of comments in the comment section, so right now, comment some items that you regret selling as you're listening to this video. Let's get into it. In this first video, let's start off with New York's very own New Age Ralph Lauren and Melian Dor. If you know me, you'll know that I've been a big fan of the brand for about three to four years now, and the majority of clothing that I've sold and regretted comes from the fact that I acquired ALD pieces and then sold them off later. The first one being this green New Balance times ALD fleece that I got in the fall winter of 2019. So I actually was lucky enough to take this top with me to France when I went to the Provençal, when I went to Aix-en-Provence, and it was an absolutely banger or it was a really great fleece because it kept me warm while it got cold there in France it was like the winter time and it just had a great styling to it it was clean cut it was simple it was just a really good all-around kind of fleece long sleeve that I had but for whatever reason maybe I was tight on money after coming back from a trip from Europe I decided to sell the shirt for like $45 which if I think about it now, that was not its market value at all. I was just looking for some quick money. For whatever reason, I, I needed the money and I sold it <laughs> and I regret it. I wish I had that shirt back right now. <laughs> Next is actually another pullover kind of long sleeve from ALD in that 2019 New Balance collaboration. I can't remember the exact materials on the fabric of this sweatshirt or long sleeve pullover thing, um, but it was really, really soft. It had nice subtle hits of New Balance and ALD. Also took it with me to France and it was an absolutely amazing piece to wear around and have. I like the green on it. It was like a perfect, like really deep olive-y fall green and it was really dope. Had a lot of fun memories of it when I was in France and I sold it, right? And the crazy thing is, is this is like tragic. This is actually tragic. I sold it for a pretty good price, like probably around 150 to 200 plus dollars, like maybe even more than 200. And I sold it and I was like, okay, well, at least I got a good amount of money for that compared to the other green fleece and the package got lost in transit the package got lost in transit and i had to refund the seller i could cry like I, that, that that breaks my heart <laughs> such a major l such a major l in that respect man the last two items i regret selling from ald were these ald long sleeves that had these cars screen printed on the front of them I had a cream long sleeve and a black long sleeve. The cream long sleeve had a green car. I don't even remember the, the model of the car if I, if I think about it. And then the black long sleeve had a red car on it. And that was a great shirt. Like it was, it was pretty like well constructed. It was very soft as ALD shirts typically are. And it had a really simplistic, cool graphic. I always used to get comments on those long sleeves back in like, I was around, I was around the time I was in college. So I used to get a, a little bit of comments on those things. Like when I went out to parties and whatnot and, and different things like that when I was on campus and things like that. And so when I decided to sell them, once again, probably because I was short a couple dollars on something else, like a lot of college kids are, <laughs> I decided to sell them because, you know, I, I don't know, I, I guess I was, like I said, I guess I was just out, out a couple bucks and needed it needed the money back and if i think about it those were some really nice tees underrated tees in my opinion a lot of people don't really talk about or care about those and i don't know if a ald will ever get to the point where like some of the more reputable brands that have been around for a long time like that have this cachet for some of the past items that they carry like supreme or bape or whatever like a lot of the items are like very sought after even though they're like 10 plus years old aod is not to that point but i think these items will be something that are pretty slept on and are pretty underrated in the entire zeitgeist of ald's collections and and what whatnot when it comes to like my fashion sense i think it's important to know that like it has been a pretty uh slow development like 
the things I'm into now as a 23 year old, almost 24, were not the things I was into when I was 19. And I think that it's important to distinguish that. I wasn't always the where I am right now with the way I think about fashion. And I still think I have a long ways to go to where I want to be. But with the things I regret selling, at least I have some things because like ALD is still one of my favorite brands because uh, I've been liking it for a long time. They have a reference to basketball and then, you know, one of America's best cultural centers in New York and all those kind of things combined make it into a really, really dope brand. And I've been loving on and rocking with them for a little while here. And they got the New Balance collabs that I absolutely love. And I, you know, was starting to get into New Balance at the time too. So everything kind of just clicked, but it's uh, it's fun to see the, the items that I have previous. and. Hopefully you're thinking about some things right now that maybe you regret selling that are uh, <laughs> you wish you still had in your closet. <laughs> All right, this next section is gonna be about shoes and sneakers that I regret selling. There's a few more here on the list. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the video. If you are, feel free to subscribe. Uh, this video is gonna be pretty relatively short. I don't even know if it'll reach 10 minutes because of the nature of the video. It's supposed to be fun, so hopefully you guys are enjoying it. All right, starting off the shoes and the kicks list, let's start with a shoe that I just, for the longest time, loved. It was kind of in the Jerry Boy era, and it was when Jerry Lorenzo was, you know, he was the best. He was Travis Scott right now, you know what I mean? And so, like, he was the, the, the leader of what I would like to call, like, youth culture hype, essentially, right? And it was the fear of God, I think, eras, the, the, the red corduroy fear of God vans, right? And I'll tell you guys a story about these. So in order for me to get these shoes, there was a local mall in the state of Colorado called Park Meadows. And at Park Meadows, there's a Paxson. Remember when I told you guys how I don't like Paxson and all these kind of things, but this was like the one time I enjoyed going to Paxson because I camped out 11 hours, 11 hours to get these shoes. And I slept in uh, uh, my friend's car, that whole night we were playing like Mario Kart. We were talking about stories back in the day. You know, it was fun and then we got tired and we were like driving around making sure no one got in front of us. And so we were like number 18 or 17 in line and they only had like 22 pairs or something like that. And so, or maybe more, maybe they had like 25 pairs, something like that, like two of each size. And it was crazy, it was crazy. So like we were there first and then started lining up and we were for sure gonna get a pair, but there were so many people behind us, I felt bad. But anyways, long story short, we got the shoes and they were a shoe, the only shoe I've ever camped out for for that long. And it was kind of crazy to do such a thing. I didn't even document it. I should have took more like pictures or something like that. But it was a lot of fun and I missed these shoes just for that memory, like for the memory with my friend, for the camp outs. And then I wore them a ton. I wore these shoes all the time when I was in college and they were they were good wears. They were good wears. I, I love me a good pair of Vans. Like I, I wore a lot more Vans when I was younger than I, I do now. And I, I miss my Vans, man. <laughs> At least the good thing is, is that I sold those for about $400. And that's a pretty good come up. I think they were like $100 retail. I had used them and I sold them for $400. I think now they go for like $700. So uh, maybe if Jerry, Jerry, if you're watching this video, bro, you know, if you want to send your boy another pair, that is what, <laughs> there is no way Jerry Lorenzo is watching this video. <laughs> Next, let's talk about a Jordan 1 that I regret selling. So I didn't have a lot of Jordan 1s. Honestly, I, you know, it was pretty hard for me to get Jordan 1s and I didn't know the, the way that drops and sneakers worked when Jordan 1s are pretty accessible. I mean, you could just walk into a store and get a Jordan 1, but I wasn't really gravitated towards Jordan 1s in that way. But the first Jordan 1 I was ever able to acquire were the Royals. And I love the Royals because I love blue as a as a young person growing up. Blue is still one of my favorite colors, um, just to look at like a like a like kind of like a blue like this or like a sky blue or even like what Tyler's wearing. Like this blue is so beautiful to me. And so, but even though Royals are a little bit darker than that, I just like the blue of the Royals. My style hadn't progressed as as much as probably what it is today. Like I didn't really have the same outfits. I was wearing skinny jeans back then, and so. I didn't necessarily love all the outfits I was wearing. And I ended up selling the Royals because I just didn't think that they worked with my, you know, my body type or whatever. I don't, I don't know, I just didn't for whatever reason. But now looking back on it, like it would still be nice to have a pair of, of Jordan 1s. I got them for retail really easily, just walked into the store. Um, the I, I just love like, like feeling on the leather, like, you know, just like kind of touching it and just, you know, thinking about all the history with Mike with, with, the, with the Royals and, 
they were my first pair of Jordan 1s. It would be great to have those back in my collection. And, uh, you know, I probably wouldn't get as many wears, but it still would be dope to have. Okay, two more shoes. So the first one, let's, let's stay on with, I guess, a little bit of the hype nature of a young kid growing up in the world and trying to figure out sneakers and whatnot. Uh, the Boost days and the Kanye West and Adidas and Ultra Boost, they were these cream 1.0 Ultra Boost that I owned that I just loved, just love those things. Because uh, when I was, I was at DU, when I was in college, it was kind of towards the tail end of like Boost hype, but our, our school was a Adidas school. So we could just wear any of the Adidas shoes that we wanted. And I had acquired the 1.0 Ultra Boost, the cream variant, and I just loved how versatile those shoes were. Boost was super comfy and is still super comfy today. I need to get a pair of Ultra Boosts again, honestly, because just how comfortable they are to work out, to walk, do all those kind of things. And, but the 1.0s were just so fire to me. I remember like just watching so many YouTube reviews on just Ultra Boost, especially the 1.0s in those cream colorway. And when I finally got my pair, it was like, Aah. and um, it's it's funny. It's funny how I sold them. And you know, my current girlfriend was like, don't sell them. Like there's so much history with them. And I decided to sell them because once again, you know, sometimes financially you just need a, a couple extra dollars here or there to survive and do those kind of things. So last but not least, this one was, I guess, once again, like 2019-ish kind of time frame before the pandemic. I had the Sakai LD Waffles in the gray variant. And with the Sakai LD Waffle, it kind of, for me, is a the, the pinnacle of what like a runner silhouette is. It has like the, it has a really like aggressive and kind of tapered look to it, like towards the forefoot. And it has like really cool design stylings. It has the, the double everything, double swoosh, double tongue, double laces, double outsole or midsoles, excuse me. And I just like the shoe, like it was super fire. I actually picked those up um, for resale and that's probably why I, I sold them again because uh, you know, I paid a, a quite a hefty penny for them, but I got all the money back because I, I, I really only wore them probably you know five or six times. I think I sized down, that's why I didn't like them as much either. I think I got a 10 and a half instead of a size 11. And so they were a little bit tight on my foot and the mesh, I don't know if you know about the, the waffles, but the mesh is so thin. Every time I wore them, I thought that my foot was just gonna break through the mesh. And I think they fixed that with later models. I think obviously there's a triple collab with Fragment and uh, uh, Sakai and, and Nike that just came out that's also gray. But I remember wearing those shoes, they give you a couple inches, they're like a classic little runner, like, but like futuristic at the same time. Those are pretty cool shoes. I, I really like the, the LD Waffle, a really, really cool model by Nike, one of the coolest um, that I think that they've come out with in a, in a while. So, but sold them, sold them and they're gone, man. So, but it's, um, it ain't easy, but it's all right. <laughs> Who knows what that jingle is from? It ain't easy, but it's all right. Come on now, it's the LeBrons. That, it was like a, there was this LeBron James kids TV show. That, that's where I remember that jingle from. I, it could be from somewhere else, but I'll put it on the screen. There was this LeBron James cartoon, like when he was with Miami. And it was hilarious, bro. I used to watch those things. It was just like crazy to see LeBron like in a cartoon. Uh, mo a lot of people don't know about that. A lot of people aren't talking about that, but that's just kind of a, a digression from this video. So let's get back on track. What are you doing? Get back on track, man. <laughs> what do you regret selling? I want to know. I really want to know. Comment down in the comment section. Any shoes, clothing, anything that you regret selling. It's kind of fun to go over regrets. Like, you know, while things are quote unquote regretful, I think everything has a purpose. You have to understand like the past shapes the present and the present can kind of shape the future and so can the past. So it's it's, it's good, everything's good. Like I don't really have like any animosity towards or, or bad feeling towards the sneakers that I let go or the clothing that I let go. I think someone put it really nicely that, you know, the things that you do in your past, they just, they just shape where you are now. And so the regrets are, you know, really non-existent if you have the right perspective about them, right? But. This video is fun to make. I enjoyed this, man. I've never taken the time to really talk to you guys about all the things that I do. And so I'm going to do that real quickly. If you haven't already, follow me on Instagram. My ad is Drew Joyner underscore. I post fit pics and reels and inspo. And I have a, a lot of things that I love to kind of put on my story, whether they be polls or just talking to you guys about different things. So follow me on there. 
check out my podcast, the Beyond the Garment podcast. There's a lot of fun things happening over there. I've had some really fantastic guests to like Drew in Color, one of another famous TikTokers. I've had you know John Taylor, who was designer at ALD, had him on the show. I had Matt Halfhill, the founder and CEO of Nice Kicks. I have, I've had so many great guests on there, and I'm kind of transitioning the podcast a little bit to making it a little bit more of a monologue as well. So there should be a lot of fun content on there if you haven't checked it out. Follow me on TikTok. I know I just made a video about if TikTok has ruined fashion, but follow your boy on there. I try to do the same thing I do here, bring you guys value entertainment and, and just kind of have a, a nice cool chill vibe chop it up do those kind of things on tiktok as well so give your boy a follow there and if you can take a look at what the brand is doing my brand edward joiner we actually have a new drop happening next week we're doing tote bags i'm getting all the images and everything ready for that they're all done i just need to make sure they're double checked and get the website ready and i have a lot of planning i need to do so follow me on all these places man i love you guys support here on youtube if you want to tap in in other places I just want to let you guys know I'm doing I'm trying to do the most I can doing a lot <laughs> as always I'm spreading peace love and positivity in 2021 so that means I'm spreading peace love and positivity to you wherever you are in the world have a wonderful rest of your day I'll see you guys next time a bientôt for those who speak French and for those who don't I need to learn a little bit of Japanese a little bit of German a little bit of Italian I need to be able to say see you soon in all the languages because I know that there's a lot of people from all over the world who view this content and I really appreciate you guys too so all right Peace. Yo, what's up, y'all? Y'all made it to the post vid vid. I appreciate you for staying to this point in the video. Hmm, let me ask you guys like a random question. Oh yeah, yeah, I just mentioned like all these people from all these different countries and stuff. Where are you guys from? Are you from the US? If you're from the US, like what city, what, what state do you live in? If you're from like Germany or Italy or Malaysia or Singapore or Australia or Switzerland or Finland or Sweden or, you know, uh, Mexico or Argentina, wherever, or, or Africa, like part of the African continent, like wherever you're from, let me know down in the comment section so we can chop it up so I can learn how to say I want to learn how to say see you soon because that's what abianto means in French like I'll see you soon or be back. Um, I want to learn how to say it in different languages so I can cover all the bases for everybody as much as I can in, in future videos. So help your boy out. Let's 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 chop it up in the comment section. All right. <laughs> Have a blessed rest of your guys' day. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.